Was Kanye right all along? Okay. College dropout, baby. Oh, college dropout. Okay. College dropout was his first album. I mean, he was doing that, and I'll be honest with you. In hindsight, I wish I would have dropped out. Bruce Lawn. Before we get into that, guys, my name is Bruce Lawn, and this channel exists to encourage you to master mind your business the master's way. All right, now let's get into the video. The collapsing relevance of a college degree. Then, was Kanye right all along? What did Kanye say about college that? dropout, baby? Oh, college dropout. Okay. College dropout was his first album. I wasn't sure if there was another statement he that, made. That was it. Oh, he, he nice. I mean, he was doing that, and you know, I'll be honest with you. In hindsight, kind of wish I would have dropped out. Oof, you kind of did. I technically, did. <laughs> Cinematic. Shout out to my, how many works. Companies are channel. announcing that they will no longer be requiring a college degree to get a job with them. More than half of the Americans that do have a college degree are now working in jobs that don't require one. Mm. And the stigma around not working a white collar job has almost been reversed as skilled trades people have started to significantly out earn their office dwelling peers. The decision to commit to an Jeez. expensive degree is one that less people are making every year. And this is either a really good thing or a really bad thing. So that has led some companies to drop a long-standing requirement, a college degree. More and more Americans are asking themselves, is a college degree still worth it? No. College is absolutely insane. He'll be a senior next year, and then we'll have to be dealing with that, and we've been looking at colleges. Job. It appears that some companies are now hiring applicants who don't have a degree. It's leaving many to wonder, is a degree really necessary? A college mm. degree used to all but guarantee an upper-middle-class lifestyle in America, and that's because they were extremely rare. According to data collected by the U.S. Census Bureau and compiled by Statista, only 7.7% .7 of Americans aged over 25 had a college degree in 1960. Sheesh. That's, that's a, crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's complete opposite. Well, they would say that a college degree would generate you, I want to say, $2 million more in lifetime earnings. Who's, who's they and what are they saying? This about is what when? they told us to hi in high school. So oh, 20 oh, years okay. ago. 20 years ago, okay. You guys need to really consider college because if you go to college, you're statistically going to make $2 million more over the course of your hmm. life. Wow. That has changed because now we have the return of true collar jobs, blue collar jobs, plumbers, electricians. Those folks a lot of times are making way more than folks with college degrees. Yeah. And the only thing that a college degree is really useful right now is STEM. Right, science, technology, engineering, math. If you're going into STEM, you need a degree in whatever you're going into. Um, if you're going to be a doctor, lawyer, but other than that, the vast majority of people don't need these degrees anymore, mm -hmm. and you definitely don't need a degree in art or theater. Yeah, or, and this know? point in, of supply and demand, like just people having degrees, was seven percent back then. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh yeah, of course, like any leg up you could get. That is a solid one if mm -hmm. a majority of people don't have one. But nowadays, that's probably shifted. Mm -hmm. And so the supply is way up of college students. And mm -hmm. so the demand is less. The demand is less, correct. All right. In 2022, 37% of the population had one. This was almost a 500% increase in the number of college graduates that companies could pick from. Now, if you do have a college degree and think that you are still in the elite minority, well, let me knock you off that high horse. According to the National Bureau of Economic Research, fewer than two-thirds of Americans are part of the workforce, so a college degree is nothing special anymore. If you are a worker that wants bargaining power in their career, you really only have two options. Your first option is to pursue an additional degree that once again makes you a rare and valuable hire, but even that is getting harder now. As of 2019, 13.1% of Americans have a master's degree or higher qualifications. That means mm. nearly twice as many people have a master's degree today than had any degree in 1960. Deg Jeez, that's crazy. Yes. Twice as many people have a master's. <laughs> a more important degree. That's a not more degrees important, became yeah. too common in the workplace, so people responded by getting even more degrees. According to the workplace analytics firm Payscale, the average salary for someone with a master's degree is $83,000 a year, which is about a $20,000 increase over the national average for a full-time employee. According to the Education Data Initiative, the average cost of a master's degree is almost $60,000. The degree should pay for itself over a long career, but the numbers alone don't tell the full story. If you have the skills and the motivation to get an advanced college degree, you are probably earning more than the average full-time American anyway, so the earnings gap is smaller than you might expect. If the thing you want most from a job is a high income and career stability, there are better options than diving into the arms race of qualifications. The Wow. 
Wow. That's interesting. The interesting relevance of a college degree is either going to be a really good thing or a really bad thing for your career. And since for some reason people think that we are too negative here at How Money Works, we are going to start with the good news first. College degrees are expensive, and most students are paying for their admission with loans that will take decades to pay off. Student loans also negatively affect other financial objectives like qualifying for a home loan or starting a business. The trade-off of a college degree is that eventually, senior white-collar jobs pay more than senior blue-collar jobs. But that doesn't really matter anymore. College has become so expensive that the financial head start from not attending is getting larger and larger. And with the flood of college graduates fighting for jobs, there is no guarantee that you will ever get into one of those senior white-collar positions that make it all worthwhile. If you get a trade instead, you can get paid for training and you can earn an above average income as soon as you are qualified. Mm -hmm. Trade jobs also make it much easier for you to transition into being a business owner. If you work as a business analyst, you can't really start your own company, unless you have a contact network good enough to land you consistent consulting roles. If you work as a skilled tradesman, starting a business is still going to be hard, but you can do it reliably much earlier in your career. Right. If That's pretty awesome. Yeah. 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 Working with your hands is not your thing, then jobs in sales have potential earnings caps much higher than even senior management jobs. Even if you simply want a normal salaried office job, the declining relevancy of a college degree could be a good thing for you. A report by the Harvard Business Review found that as university qualifications became more common, recruiters and employers increasingly demanded them regardless of whether they were actually required for a specific job. You'd probably want your doctor to have gone to medical school. But does it really matter if someone managing a marketing campaign has a Bachelor of Arts degree? The good news <laughs> is that more companies are dropping the rigid requirements for a college degree because most skills are learnt on the job anyway. The same report from the Harvard Business Review found that in the age of technical disruption and unpredictable job evolution, most degrees didn't teach skills that were relevant to most people's work. The report also found that companies still requiring their workers to have a piece of paper as a prerequisite for leading a job were hurting themselves by artificially limiting their candidate pool, or paying a premium for work that could be done by anybody. This was a report published by a school famous for selling those pieces of paper. When they talk about the workplace benefits of overlooking a college degree, you can probably trust them. It's true. More than half of American workers with a college degree right now are not working in roles that require a degree on paper. But for every person working a six-figure coding role at a forward-thinking tech startup that dropped the college degree requirement, there are hundreds of workers with a four-year degree under their belt who are waiting tables because they couldn't find work anywhere else. Sure, Jeez. they are both technically working in roles that don't require a degree, but the nice-sounding headlines are covering over something that could cost you hundreds of thousands of dollars over your career. So it's time to learn how money works right. to find out. You can have a great degree and not know in a tacit sense what it is you're supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm not have any practical skills to execute whatever trade you're in. Yeah. You can not have a degree and have incredible tacit skills, but still end up broke. Okay. Because what you actually need is you need expertise, credibility, and the most important aspect to finding any kind of job, a network. Mm. If you have, if you can, if you can functionally do something, yes, and you have the credibility that people believe you can do said thing, and you have the network, now, now we're now, now you're off to something, yeah. And a lot of times, people don't have those three things. They don't have the network. They don't have the expertise. They don't have the credibility. So the college degree just becomes the credibility. The uh, or the or the training for it. It also becomes the network. Becomes the network for yeah. a lot of people. Like my brother went to USC. His network definitely helped him. You know what I mean? They de it definitely helped him. My advice then is, and I'm going to take this video in a crazy direction. My uh -oh. advice to you is become good at something that other people value that is hard to replace, where you can build credibility and you can extend your network. Okay. If you can do that. Yeah. You will always have work. Let's name a few things to give people ideas. We could talk about how Chris got a job here. We could talk about how we're onboarding Chris, uh, the other Chris Mack. Yeah. We brought on two Chris's because they were good at something, right? Yeah. They had a portfolio that highlighted their credibility. Mm -hmm. And Chris cold DM how many people? A hundred plus. hundred plus. Chris Mack, this is the old, this, Chris Mack with the Mack move. Chris Mack. Signed up for FPU, which I teach at my class, uh, a class I teach, Financial Peace University, at my local church. Wow. Pulled up for two, three weeks. Yeah. 
super cool. Him and his wife asked questions. And then like on week three or four, pitched a, a package for me. He's like, you talking about ma- making a bigger shovel. Here we go. Right? So, <laughs> so in, in the networking part. <laughs> Not the self, be named Chris. Be named Chris. Chris, Chris Boswell. Chris Boswell. <laughs> so this is the part where um, it's never been easier to network. Mm. It's never been easier to network. Yeah. Chris Mack brought me on as a client because he was willing to show up to a, a class I was I was promoting publicly on my social media. Yep. Hang out for a couple of weeks and then transition that and we and and he has me as a client for two months and possibly longer yeah. if he can produce results. And you know what Chris Robertson's value proposition was too? Hmm. And this is this is really interesting. His value proposition was that he was local. Mm-hmm. It's like sometimes when you're reaching out to people, you're like, oh, I don't really have much to say. Mm-hmm. It's like Chris wasn't in the network. Chris wasn't in. He was just reaching out, following up mm-hmm. consistently. Mm-hmm. And then it was like, well, he is local. Yep. And we only have a bunch of, like, there's only so many local people. So sometimes you're reaching out and like, that is, hey, I'm local to you. Mm-hmm. I can come to you. I can come to we you. We can work together, yes. you know? And so that's interesting. That's super interesting. Yeah. I like that. So the network aspect, I think, is where a lot of people just don't know how to do that. And that word is already kind of gross. Yeah. Like that ugh, network, you know? It's like, uh, yeah. I, I'm meeting you with the intention of handing you my business card by the end of this conversation. Right. It's like, yeah, let's that's not, not do that. That's not network. Network <laughs> is Yuck. how can I establish some sort of rapport and, and have a skill or asset that the person needs Mm-hmm. That actually solves the pro- a problem that person has. That is what actual networking is. Yeah. Right. If you're trying to do that, or it's just, hey, I'm just gonna be friendly and not ask for anything. Mm-hmm. You know. And so I think if people thought about these things, then a lot of this navigating would be much much easier. So so I say all that to say your people you have access to, people your skill set. The credibility for your skills, because some, some some sort of portfolio nowadays, your credibility can just be your Instagram. Like I could, if I can go on your Instagram and I see you have good work, that instantly is going to build credibility, open the door for you to do something. And so I think now, in my opinion, it's easier than ever before. Thank you so much for watching that video, guys. I believe that one of the best ways you can build a business is by first building a platform online. So Zach Sparazzo put together a free training for you on the number one metric you can be looking for to explode your YouTube platform. Click the link in the pinned comment below so you can start that now. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.